Good morning, Living Faith Fellowship, and Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for taking time to join with us together on this Christmas Eve morning. I hope that you have your family gathered together for a quick devotion and for us to draw from God's Word. I want to open up with this wonderful Christmas story that everyone knows and reads annually out of Luke chapter 2. It says in verse 6, And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field watching over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of earth, peace among those to whom he is pleased. It's such a beautiful story, so well written. It is one that we reflect on year after year, and we think of the majestic scene of this child and family gathered around uh, a manger and the child laying in the manger and shepherds being present and a multitude of heavenly hosts singing and worshiping God. But at the same time, we often question the lowliness of it, the, the humility of where he was born and, and the situation that he was born in. And we reflect on it well. But sometimes I feel like what trips us up is the smallness, the insignificance, the humbleness of being born in a manger in Bethlehem, being from Nazareth, whom it was later said, what good could come from Nazareth? Scripture itself says that. But we see that this baby was born, and if we're not careful, we have a tendency to view it from the same prism. We love the story. We dress it up. We think it's beautiful this time of year. We spray the stars across the sky in the night over the manger and we paint this beautiful manger scene. But in the end, sometimes we're left wondering, how could this baby, how could such a small, insignificant birth of a baby make that big of a difference to my life? Well, we would never say that out loud, but the truth is we wonder how how could that event impact me in reality? How could it affect my finances? How could it affect my job? How could it change my situation at home? How could it change my health reports? Have you ever seen someone unpack a, a small suitcase and when they unpack it, it's almost like a bomb explodes? Things just pop out of everywhere from that suitcase and you think to yourself, well, how in the world did you get so much crammed into this little suitcase? And sometimes we, I guess, fall into that same trap. When we look at Jesus, we wonder how God could take such magnificence, such healing, such salvation, such redemption, and pack it into this lowly little setting so although we paint this beautiful scene, there's times that I believe we struggle connecting to of this beautiful scene of Christmas and celebrating all that it is and connecting that to him being the light of the world that was born into darkness, which is what scripture says. They were a land in deep darkness and into that setting is where Jesus was born. And when he was born, he changed the entire setting from that day to this. It's not just a pastor or a religious person saying that. It's history. It says from that day to this day, this world has forever been changed by this little 
insignificant package that was born in Bethlehem, a child raised in Nazareth. Later, Paul would address it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says this, So we stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we see him now. Don't you love that? He says that in chapter 5, verse 16. What he's saying is that Christ came intentionally that way so that we wouldn't view things from the outward package, but we would understand that contained in this small, insignificant child that was born in Bethlehem, came such wonders, such salvation, such deliverance, such healing, if we could only grasp it, if we could only believe it, and receive him as our Savior. It goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says in verse 18, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. So it's not that Jesus was born in a manger just to reconcile people in his day. But he's given us the wonderful task of reconciling people today. Reminding them that in this small package came such overwhelming abundance of salvation and healing and answers and hope and love and peace. As we enter 2024, I hope that you and your family will take that lesson and see opportunities in some of the most disguised places and allow God to use you to reconcile people to Him while we have a chance. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your family. I want to encourage you right now, if you will, to take time with your family and discuss what we've talked about this morning. Maybe receive some prayer requests from them and gather hands together and pray for God's blessings, God's direction, and thank Him for the wonderful work that He has done and is still doing through us today.